When working on any classic car, there's a lot of cases where you're going to run into aluminum parts. Aluminum is a relatively easy material to work with. Uh, it's soft to move, it buffs up and polishes real easy. Uh, the only hindrance can be is sometimes dealing with coatings and anodized coatings and we've removed that already on this piece. And we're ready to actually start the process of restoring the, this piece in itself. Uh, to do that we'll like straight, we'll remove the dents, we'll sand out the scratches and get it ready to buff. Okay, to start we're going to like actually remove some of the dents and some of the dings in here. And, you know, we've got like a little high spot coming from the backside. And um, the way we get those out is just, just this, the same method that we used, you know, on, in basic body filling and, and work. Again, we have sort of a texture on this surface, so we don't want to like get out here and just wail on this because then we'll end up flattening out this texture. So we want to go very soft and very, you know, slow about it and slowly bring the finish back to where it needs to be. This also relates to high spots, you know, as you see here we have a, a little spot here on the back side where it's actually pushed through towards the interior. And uh, in order to get that to come down we'll have to actually just kind of go in and we can we can tap it with the hammer a little bit again this is aluminum you want to be real slow and real careful about um, moving the material too fast or too much and, and with aluminum usually the biggest uh, biggest concern is because aluminum work hardens real easy and you, it will actually fatigue and crack unlike steel uh, steel will fatigue and crack too, but it takes a lot more work to do it. With aluminum, the tendency, if you really got to bend a piece a lot, you may want to actually heat it up and anneal the aluminum before you, uh, before you move it too far. And what that does is relaxes the structure in the uh, aluminum itself. And we're just going to keep working out some of these small dents. Um, here where we've taken this one down, we've brought this high spot down. Our next step would then be to actually go in and uh, we'll use some 600 grit sandpaper and just a regular paint stick. Uh, what this gives us is a nice solid firm surface to work the sand from. And we can come in and actually sand that place where we've worked it. You can kind of, you can see where we've still got a little bit of a high spot there. We'll knock that down just a little bit more and then sand it some more. Also got some deep scratches that we're gonna actually just sand out. You know, there's things with the with the anodizing gone, we can go in and actually sand off all of the scratches and, and get the, the surface real smooth. You know, whether you're doing, you know, here it's an interior door panel piece, even if you're doing like outside trim on a, a lot of the cars of the late 60s. Uh, into the 70s, they had switched from using stainless steel for a lot of their trim to actually using uh, anodized and uh, flash uh, plated aluminum for the trim panels. And uh, of course, it was cheaper than stainless, but uh, requires just a little bit more work to actually get them to 
clean up and it's really not a labor intensive process but more of a time consuming kind of a little bit of a putty process it's a I always contend it's a good project for in the shop when you got the game on the TV and you can like just not have to think about uh, what you're doing for a long time because it is kind of a, a little bit time consuming to actually get the surface all sanded out. We're going to just kind of work on this end on this piece for this video to show you how the process is done. Again, we're using 600 grit sandpaper. Uh, I don't suggest anything, you know, coarser than that, just because you don't want to end up leaving a lot of uh, scratches. Aluminum does buff out real easy, uh, but you don't want a bunch of deep scratches where you have to l remove a lot of material to actually get the scratches out. You can see as the water kind of turns, turns black as the Aluminum is getting removed from the surface. We also can, you know, this because this is right above the door, inside door handle, you know, it gets lots of it, it lots of small scratches in the anodizing that um, that needed to, you know, actually get you know sanded out and polished up. And it's a good idea to, you know, check your wipe down your surface, check it real well every now and then, see how your progress is coming. You know, the great thing about this, if we get all the way to the, the point where we're, you know, buffing it out and we see something that we want to, you know, address a little bit more, you can just go right back in, you know, straighten parts of it and, uh, you know, rebuff it out then at that point. Just a little bit more. Almost got that, there was a deep scratch in here probably from when the door was, uh, there's a chrome piece that slides along the top of this. That uh, if you're not careful when you're actually putting it in place, you can scratch the edges of these moldings. And it's not uncommon if you see on this particular car, um, where the the because of the way it's designed that it <clears throat> a lot of them have scratches in the same spot okay, i think we got that pretty good like i say if we if we get into it and we start buffing we see we need to do it more it's just a matter of grabbing the sandpaper and and uh, sanding it a little more Next, we're going to move from a 600 grit to a 1200 grit. This will help uh, refine the, the surface, make it a little easier to buff, take out some of the sanding scratches left by the 600 grit. And generally, you know, when you're working this, when you're taking the dings out and the dents out, if it's just a little bit high when you start, you know, the, the imperfection, when you actually start sanding you know, it'll take off the high spots and it'll kind of even things out. Whereas if it uh, got dings in there that are too low, there's like pretty much no amount of sanding that's going to take those out. So you should go back in and use your hammer and dolly, or you can use like nylon uh, pry tools and stuff like that to actually just smooth out the rough spots. You know, like I say, aluminum will move really easy. You know, most people are aware of that. So you don't need to use real aggressive tools to uh, actually get it to shape and form. Once you're happy with, you know, how you've sanded it out and how smooth it's gotten, you know, you're, you're good to go just to go straight to buff at this point. And uh, when I'm buffing aluminum, I, I usually don't use anything more aggressive than, 
You know, I usually do all my, you know, defect removal with the wet or dry sandpaper. When it comes to actually polishing, then I can use just a white rouge, uh, which is a, a type of uh, buffing compound uh, that is, you know, really fine and it'll put a good luster on it. And then use a loose buff on the buffing wheel because you don't need to be real aggressive with them because it will move fairly easily. We're going to just buff out this corner here, kind of show you in comparison to, you know, the raw stripped of anodizing aluminum and then the sanded and buffed area. And there you can see a quick comparison. Here was the uh, we the stripped of anodizing bare aluminum, and just a little time on the buffer. You know we've got a nice good luster to it. This is a, a very acceptable finish for the inside of the car, and uh, it's, like I say, it just takes time, a little bit of patience, and you know we'll have the rest of this piece looking just as good. And you should get out in the garage and start buffing your own pieces.